I have to say, I agree with so much of what was said here. I think that when it comes to what should next be on the ballot in California, it needs to be the thing which hits, as Stephen called, the sweet spot between what's the thing that most advances sort of the basic principles of decriminalization, legalization around marijuana in terms of the ability of people to possess, the ability to obtain it from a source legally, the ability of people to grow this sort of stuff, and at the same time is winnable. Right. I think that's what we're aiming for. I think that's what it's all about, really. Right. It's what's winnable that goes as far as possible to put our dream thing out there and knowing it's going to go down. Why bother? Right. On the other hand, to sell ourselves so short that we're actually going to win isn't all that meaningful. Why bother? Right. In the end, there's an element of risk this. But, you know, if you want to get the money behind this thing, you want to get the momentum behind this thing, it's got to figure out that place. Now, as people have been saying everything's got to be on the table. I personally, with this issue about about employees not being able to be fired if you test positive and uh, uh, but you weren't high in the job. I think we should do everything possible to keep that provision in there. But if it's got to be. I mean, I mean, it's a core principle. People shouldn't be punched what they put in their body. It's a core principle. But Dale makes a legitimate point. It's got to be on the table. I am torn. We're always throwing the kids overboard. We go for this 21, you know, age limit, right? When what percent of all the people being busted are under the age of 21? 40 percent, 50 percent like that? We throw them overboard, right, on this sort of thing. So it's not necessarily going to help them. On the other hand, if we can't win it at all, if the evidence is conclusive on this stuff, what do you do? I think there's king things like that which are pivotally important for what we stand for. Hey, same thing with, with personal cultivation. The average California non-consumer, non-consumer doesn't like personal cultivation. That feels a bit out of control for them. But that is a fundamental principle we're talking about. People's ability to be able to grow their own while finding some secure access to this thing. So the, I mean, what we're talking about is not selling out core principles or the other way around. It's about finding what's most going to be winnable while we advance the core principles and the model as far as possible. That's what I have to say about California for this moment. I am really eager. I don't have, and DPA does not have a vested interest. We are happy to be simultaneously, you know, advising Tom Amiano and Richard Lee and the Prop 19 team on their drafts, right? We don't have a preferred model on this sort of stuff. We're first and foremost concerned about the human rights and about the individual consumers. That comes first. And then the distribution systems that flow from that is what comes next. We want to reduce arrests. We also know the large, significant portion of the people being busted are not white people. They're black and brown people, right? They're, and they're actually not very much you know, here right now, right? But it's black and brown people getting arrested at three, five, and ten times the rate of everybody else. We cannot forget about them. What do we do about the Humboldt phenomenon? People who feel their interest lies in the, the maintenance of marijuana prohibition but benignly enforced? You know, there's a principle here, right? I mean, there's a principle here. And so we can try to accommodate that as much as possible. But there's a principle, ultimately. We cannot, as Drug Policy Alliance or as a movement, be solely here to represent, to defend, and the vested interests of people who have benefited either from prohibition or, quite frankly, from its violation. That can't be our major priority, right? Now, the other thing I'm going to say, the other thing I'm going to say, and, and please, no applause, I only have five minutes. Um, the, 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 the only thing I want to say is that for, I, I, I see my job in this, and I hope many of you do as well. We are part of a long-term multi-generational struggle. That's the bottom line. And it ain't just about marijuana. It's about the whole damn drug war. It's about living in a country with a half million people behind bars and a million point six getting arrested. It's about, you know, inflicting our policies around the world. I have to think about this as a multi-generational struggle. I know you take two steps forward and a step back. I'm worried about what's going to happen when people come flying back in. I'm worried about Oregon and South Dakota losing twice in a row on medical marijuana. I'm worried about what could be happening in Montana later on this year with people responding to some wild, crazy people writing recommendations like they're giving out candy. I mean, I, I'm worried about that stuff. Part of this is about getting tougher and smarter. It's about learning from the mistakes in the 70s that we have the most persuasive message when it comes to keeping kids safe. That our bottom line is keeping kids safe. We make that message better than anybody else, then we win, right? And it's about the bigger thing. Look, is there going to be a three strikes reform initiative on the ballot this year? I mean, next year could well be. And that's going to be a wonderful thing that's going to make a big difference. And it could win. And they will go together. And we're not going to fight between one another on this stuff. More broadly, you know what this year is, 2011? 
It's the 40th anniversary of President Nixon declaring war on drugs. It also happens to be the 50th anniversary of the single convention, the single convention on narcotic drugs passed by the UN. You know, two very oppressive historical moments. Well, we are going to be doing everything possible as Drug Policy Alliance to make the most of these moments as a moment for reflection in the country. And the key issue, though, it's about the whole drug war. It's about reducing incarceration. It's about treating addiction as a health pro problem. It's about the other bills we'll be doing in Sacramento on overdose prevention and reducing the spread of HIV AIDS and maybe an asset forfeiture reform and a whole range of health approaches in trying to reduce the harms of drug war. But in the end, marijuana is the most important element. Why? Not because it's locking up the most people, which it's not. Right? Not because it's causing the most harm or death or all this sort of stuff. Not because the oppressiveness on the marijuana laws is the most oppressive thing going on in America right now. The reason is, is that because if we can take marijuana out of the criminal justice system, if we can legitimize that idea, we radically transform the entire discussion. Right? Obama said it yesterday, and at this point, Krolikowski can no longer say there's no room for debate on this stuff. Right. Nobody else can say that. He, that move he made... Obama's statement is almost as significant as what Holder's memo was on medical marijuana a year and a half ago. It opens up space and running room. What we're going to be doing, nationally speaking, right, is about trying to get people to sign on, the elites, the range of people around taking marijuana out of the criminal justice system. That's the way we move this entire thing forward. Something's going on in America. 2005 Gallup poll showed 36% were in favor of legalizing marijuana use, 60% against. 24-point gap. A few months ago, 2010, five years later, it showed 46% in favor and 50% against. Four-point gap. We narrowed the gap. We. The gap narrowed by 20 points. Who knows what our role was in all this? The gap narrowed by 20 points in five years. But... When we won medical marijuana, Prop 215, the other ones, we already had 65% of the country on our side at that time. That muffled to some extent what the feds could do in response. If California or Colorado or some other state pops through in 2012 and we still only have the 45% soft on our side, it empowers the federal government to come back in and slam California, slam Colorado, whoever crosses the finish line first. So what we're going to do, everything possible to build support, to keep that support going, not just in California, not not just in Colorado, but around the country and around the world. Thank you. <laughs>